Thanks, John, and uh, my thanks to all of you for um, all that you're doing to empower parents and to enhance uh, quality education in, in Pennsylvania. An issue that I think um, is critical across our country today and certainly here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania is the dramatic decrease in upward economic mobility. As we look at all of the economic data here in Pennsylvania and across the country, we see a decrease in upward mobility. And that strikes at the core of the American dream. We here all believe that our children should have more opportunity than what we have had. And unfortunately, for so many across this country and across the state, that is increasingly not the case. And it's particularly true for a child born in America today, born into poverty. The likelihood of that child moving into the middle class, the likelihood of that child moving into the um, top economic brackets today is all but impossible. And why is that? What has happened? I would submit it's the decline of the family. It's the decline of the strength of our communities, the decline in the free enterprise system, and it's been the decline in the quality of our education system. And during my time in the House of Representatives, and I certainly commit during the time that I serve, have the opportunity to serve in the State Senate, that I'm committed to restoring and building an opportunity society in Pennsylvania by strengthening the family, strengthening our communities, by restoring the free enterprise system, and building a quality education system in Pennsylvania. We know how to do this. We know how to build a quality education system by empowering parents, by ensuring that public policy reflects that education is first and foremost the responsibility of a family, by expanding choice and competition, recognizing there's not a one-size-fits-all approach to education, that some families and some students thrive in home schools, in brick-and-mortar charter schools, in cyber charter schools, in a traditional public school, in a parochial school or a private school of their choice. The t quality of the teacher in the classroom is phenomenally important, and I'm extremely proud of the work that we've done in Pennsylvania to enhance the teaching profession, putting in place a more rigorous teacher evaluation system that ensures that we're looking at actual student performance as a part of a teacher's evaluation, and that we can help teachers analyze data to improve in their craft, to share best practices. Certainly funding is important, and over the last four years, in particular in Pennsylvania, it seems as though the education debate has, has centered on how much money do we spend. And what's been lost in that conversation is not just do we spend money well, but how do we actually improve student academic outcomes. And so I think we've taken a number of important steps, putting in place rigorous state academic standards, putting in place new systems of accountability and transparency so that the public has access to how our schools, particularly our traditional public schools, and our public charter schools, how they are performing, so the parents are empowered with information. As I've said, important work to enhance the quality of the teaching profession. And we've taken some important steps, I believe, in expanding choice and options for parents. The expansion of the highly successful EITC program, putting in place a new opportunity scholarship program for students who are trapped in persistently failing schools. These are important steps. But we have so much more to do. In my view, we ought not rest until every child across this commonwealth, regardless of socioeconomic status, has the opportunity to attend a school of their choice, whether that be a charter, a cyber charter school, a home school, or a private school. And fixing a flawed funding formula to ensure that we are funding not the education bureaucracy, that we're not funding institutions, that we're, but we're funding students, and that families can exercise real choices with those options. And so you have my commitment 
that I will continue to work towards those issues and others, online course choice, expanding blended and hybrid learning opportunities. There's so much more that we must do. But I also want you to know that I'm absolutely committed to expanding real choice to families and ensuring that our public policy reflects, as I've said, that education is first and foremost the responsibility of family. You know, as I, in closing, as I think of this debate, I, I can't help for so many across this Commonwealth to think of an image now nearly 50 years ago of George Wallace, Governor George Wallace in Alabama, standing in a schoolhouse door to prevent African American students from walking into a higher quality integrated school. And as I think of that, I think of what we're doing today in many schools all across this country in the Commonwealth. And we as elected leaders are standing in that same schoolhouse door and we're preventing students, many of them of color, in persistently failing schools, we're standing in that schoolhouse door and preventing them from leaving. And that is just as unjust. And we must all be committed to correcting that social injustice. Thank you for having me here, and God bless all of you.